Hi all. Today we are going to discuss module 4 random processes or stochastic processes. See actually uh, in the first three modules we have discussed all about random variables. In the first module we have seen discrete random variables and certain special uh, discrete random variables like uh, binomial binomial uh, variable and the poison uh, random variables and then in the second module we have seen uh, what are continuous random variables its properties and we have seen certain standard continuous distributions like normal distribution uh, uniform distribution and exponential distribution Again, in the third module, uh, it was all about joint probability distributions. Uh, that means the joint probability distributions of two uh, discrete random variables and joint probability distributions of two continuous random variables. And fourth and fifth modules, we are going to discuss random processes. Actually, it is a kind of extension of the first three modules and here actually we are going to discuss about a series of random variables, not just one or two, but uh, <clears throat> a, a set of random variables. Now, let us see what is the definition of a random processes. Actually, this topic is really uh, interesting because we are uh, going to discuss uh, the real world situations. Okay, let's see uh, how we classify or how, how do we model such situations using probabilistic arguments. Okay, so first let's see what is a random process. Uh, so before uh, going into the definition of random process, let us see some uh, random variables. I'll write two random variables. First one, so random example of random variables random variables see this is one of the examples number of number of likes for an FB post this is a random variable right I think we have seen this example in the previous uh, modules. Number of likes for an FB post. Another example is temperature. Temperature. Okay, so <clears throat> or specifically we can write the maximum temperature of a day. Right, these two are two examples. And this one is a discrete random variable because the number of likes for an FB post that uh, if we call this as the random variable x is the number of likes for an FB post, then x takes values from 0, 1, 2, etc. Right? It, it, it can be up to infinity and maximum temperature of a day and here again we define this as the random variable x then x takes the value actually it can be uh, it, this value is not discrete uh, because we cannot say that you know after 20 degree you will get 29 degree no it can be any value so it takes a value from an interval so we write the minimum temperature you know the current situation we can we can write the minimum temperature let it be some 10 degree centigrade to maximum let it be some 45 degree centigrade so x takes values in this interval 10 degree centigrade to 45 degree centigrade so this one is a continuous random variable now how do we define a random process from this example I'm going to make some simple modifications of these two uh, random variables. Then 
you know gradually that evolves as a random process right so this is what i am going to do okay so <clears throat> number of likes for an fb post on the nth day of january 2020 right so actually the thing is that this is the number of likes for an fb post but we do that we are going to consider we are, we are going to conduct that experiment on every day of january 2020 okay so this one actually this one has a time uh, parameter right on the first day what is the number of likes on the second day what is the number of likes and the third day similarly on the 31st day what is going to be the number of likes and this number of likes is a random variable okay so so what happens is that we will get 31 random variables so we define this as xn xn number of likes for an fb post on the nth day of january so these are the random variables that you will get x1 x2 etc xn so here x31 in this case right so here so we have 31 random variables so x1 means that is the number of likes that you obtain for the fb post on the first day of january so x31 means the number of likes on the last day that means the 31st of january 2020 so we have 31 different random variables each one is a random variable each one has uh, the the range of values from 0 to infinity all right okay similarly we can consider this one maximum temperature of a day this is how we define so uh, let me redefine this as x of t as the maximum temperature maximum temperature at time t of ad okay temperature at time t of ad so this is what x of t so the temperature definitely that varies so this one is a random variable at time t of ad so at any time we can observe the temperature so here we have we denote that as x of t so for example when time at 6 o'clock we can define you know x of 6 when time uh, you know 18 hour, at 18 hours we can define x of 18 so uh, we can define this x of t temperature at any time of a day so this one is again infinite number of random variables here we have right at any time you obtain the temperature random variable okay so these kind of things are called a random processes all right so generally a random processes has two different parts first one is a random variable right because that x represents a random variable here it is temperature and here x represents the random variable number of likes okay and here we have some index variables xn this n is a discrete case in this case okay so this is a time index xn is the time index and this t is again the time index okay here we have a discrete time index and here we have a continuous time index okay so generally based on these random variables and this time index we can classify the random processes into two okay uh, in, into four so first we define two things one is the state space state space is the outcome of of the random variable usually we denote this using 
the letter X or S okay state space and then we have a time parameter. and the second one is a parameter set parameter set T this one usually represents the time time parameter it can be a continuous time parameter like this or a discrete parameter like this okay so and the outcome of this random variable s uh, usually this one take only real values okay real values all right now uh, let us classify uh, so first let's define what is a random process right now so simply we can we can say that a random process is an indexed set of an indexed set of random variables is a random process and indexed set in the sense that t can be discrete so in that case we represent that as xn or it can be a continuous time if t is continuous we represent that as x of t okay so the definition is that an indexed set of random variables an indexed set of random variables usually we denote this as x of t or xn okay as i told you this one has two parts one is the state space part the other one is the parameter part okay so <clears throat>
maximum temperature during the interval 0 to t. So these are the four examples. Okay. Here, uh, see, as I, as I told you, there are two parts of a random process. One is the state space S and the other one is the discrete I mean, time parameter T. So for all these cases, we can do that. Write S and T, we can write. Okay, S and T. Here again, S and T. And in the first case, S is this random variable, number of likes of an FB cost. Okay, so that is something like 0, 1, 2, etc. This is a discrete random variable. And here, the time is on the nth day. So T is like 1, 2, 3, etc. So this is the index set. So here both are discrete. The state space is discrete and the time is discrete. So we call the first one as discrete state space, discrete time random processes. And the second one is a maximum temperature. So you know that is something like 0 degrees centigrade. It's an interval, right? So 0 degree centigrade to some 45 degree centigrade. But here P is again on the nth day. So that is discrete. 1, 2, etc. 31. So here they have a continuous state space, discrete time, random processes. Second one. The third one, we have uh, number of likes. So S is like 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And T is during time 0, T. Okay? So here T takes the value 0 to infinity. At any time you can you, you can uh, search for that. Okay? At any time you can uh, count the total number of likes. So T is an interval. So this is discrete state space, continuous time, random processes. And the last one, Maximum temperature 0 degree centigrade to 45 degree centigrade, and here the time is again 0 to infinity. Both are continuous. So we call the last one as the continuous state space, continuous uh, time random processes. So these are the four different uh, random processes. Okay. I think from these examples that the classification is clear, right? Okay. So, like this, you know, we can we can uh, search for any uh, number of examples like this in our real life. Okay. Now, uh, so we now we have defined what is a random processor. Okay. Now, uh, mathematically, for for the analysis. Or, or for the mathematical analysis of these these types of examples, what are the basic things that we require? So definitely, these are the random variables, right? Or or a group of random variables. So definitely, we we have to uh, discuss about the distribution function and the density function, or uh, or its expectations, right? What are the uh, correlations? Those things have to be analyzed okay so uh, let's see that so these are some definitions so let x to x of t be a random processes First, we define the distribution function. First, we define the distribution function as f of xt, f of xt, as it contains you know two variables. X is the 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 <coughs> value of the random variable at x, okay, and t is the time parameter. Okay, so 
So we define this as the probability that the random variable, the random variable at time t takes the value or uh, at t less than or equal to x. So it's a probability that the random variable x at time t less than or equal to uh, the value x. So we denote that function as f of x t. So this is a distribution function. Then the density function is small f of x t. Uh, so actually this one has two variables, right? So we knew, uh, we have seen in the uh, first uh, two chapters that density function is a derivative of the distribution function. But here the problem is, this one has, you know, uh, two variables. So the density function is defined. That means we can find uh, its derivative, first order derivative, second order derivative. Okay, now the density function, uh, it is f of x t. Uh, it is the, actually this one has two variables, right, x and t. Therefore, it is the partial derivative dou by dou x of f of x t. And this is called the first order density. First order density. Similarly, we can define the higher order density functions as f of x1, x2, t1, t2. This one means that uh, actually at t1 we will get a random variable x of t1, right? So x of t1 is a random variable, x of t1. So x of t1 takes the value x1, okay? And x of t2, at t2 we will get another random variable x of t2 and that takes the value x2, alright? So, and this density function is obtained by dou square over dou x1 dou x2 of f of x1 x2 t1 t2 okay so this is a second order uh, density Similarly, we can extend this one. Third order, fourth order, etc. Nth order density can be calculated. Right? Now we move on to the next one as the expectation. Mu of x of t or the expectation of x of t. So mu is the average and we denote that as the expectation of x of t. Then this expectation. Then autocorrelation. We denote that as R of T1, T2. That is the expectation of x of t1 times x of t2. Okay, x of t1 is one random variable. That means the random variable at time t1. x of t2 is a random variable at time t2. So these two are two different random variables. We take the product, then find the expectation of that. Okay, so that is called uh, the autocorrelation, and that will be a function of t1 and t2. Next one. Auto covariance. Auto covariance. That is C of T one T two. C of T one T two. That is the is a formula. R of T one T two minus mu of X of T one. or mu of x of t. That means you find the autocorrelation minus 
the expectation of x of t1 into expectation of x of t2. And that is the auto covariance. And then the correlation coefficient. R of T1, T2, that is C of T1, T2 over square root of C of T1 times C of C of T1, T1 times C of T2, T2. Okay, so these are the important formulas that uh, that has to be memorized. Okay, so here this mu of x of t uh, instead of writing this one, we can write this mu of t. Okay, now based on this one, uh, we have to define uh, the special random processes. We will see, uh, first of all, we have to memorize all these results and we will see the other things in the next class. Okay.